We now present Riders to the Sea, a play by John Millington Singh, produced by me, Holo Hay, with Peg Monaghan as Moria, Maura O'Sullivan as Kathleen, Nassani Aurochoin as Nora, and Porrick O'Neill as Bartley. Riders to the Sea. She's lying down, God help her, and maybe sleeping if she's able. What is it you have? The young priest is after bringing them. It's a shirt and a plain stocking were got off a drowned man in Donegal. We are to find out if it's Michael's they are. Sometime herself will be down looking by the sea. How would they be Michael's, Nora? How would he go the length of that way to the far north? The young priest says he's known the like of it. If it's Michael's they are, Sissy, you can tell herself he's got a clean burial by the grace of God. And if they're not his, let no one say a word about them, for she'll be getting her debts, Sissy, with crying and lamenting. Did you ask him would he stop Batley going the stay with the horses to the Galway Fair? I won't stop him, Sissy, but let you not be afraid. Herself does be saying prayers half through the night... And the Almighty God won't leave her destitute, to see, with no son living. Is the sea bad by the white rocks, Nora? Middle and bad, God help us. There's a great roaring in the west, and it's worse to be getting when the tides turn to the wind. Will I open the bundle now? Maybe she'd wake up on us and come in before we are done. It's a long time we'll be, and the two of us crying. She's moving about on the bed. She'll be coming in a minute. Give me the ladder and I'll put them up in the top loft, the way she won't know them at all. And maybe when the tide turns, she'll be going down to see what he be flowing from me. She's coming. Isn't it tough enough you have for this day and evening? There's a cake baking at the fire for a short space. And Batley will want it when the tide turns if he goes to Connemara. He won't go this day with the wind rising from the south and west. He won't go this day, for the young priest will stop him surely. He'll not stop him, Mother. And I heard him and Simon and Stephen Feetie and Colm Sean saying he would go. Where is he itself? He went down to see where there'd be another boat sailing in the week. And I'm thinking it won't be long till he's here now for the tides turning at the green head and the hookers tacking from the east. I hear someone passing the big stone. He's coming now and he in a hurry. Where's the bit of new rope Kathleen was bought in Connemara? Give it to him, Nora. It's on the nail by the white boards. I hung it up this morning for the pig with the black feet was eating it. Is that it, Bartley? You do right to leave that rope, Bartley, hanging by the boards. It'll be wanting in this place, I'm telling you, if Michael is washed up tomorrow morning... Or the next morning, or any morning in the week. For it's a deep grave we'll make him, by the grace of God. I have no halter the way I can ride down on the mare, and I must go now quickly. This is the one boat going for two weeks or beyond it, and the fair will be a good fair for horses, I heard them saying below. It's a hard thing they'll be saying below if the body is washed up and there's no man in it to make the coffin. And I after given a big price for the finest white board you'd find in Connemara. How would it be washed up? And we after looking each day for nine days. And a strong wind blowing a while back from the west and south. If it isn't found itself, that wind is raising the sea. And there was a star up against the moon and it rising in the night. If it was a hundred horses or a thousand horses you had itself. What is the price of a thousand horses against a son where there's one son only? Kathleen, let you go down each day and see the sheep aren't jumping in on the rye. And if the jobber comes, you can sell the pig with the black feet if there's a good price going. How would the like of her get a good price for a pig? If the west wind hauls with the last bit of the moon, let you and Nora get up weed enough for another cock for the kelp. It's hard said we'll be from this day. With no one in it but one man to work. 
It's had it will be surely the day you're drowned with the rest. What way will I live and the girls with me, and I an old woman looking for the grave? Is she coming to the pier, Nora? She's passing the green head and letting fall her sails. I'll have half an hour to go down, and you'll see me coming again in two days, or in three days, or maybe in four days if the wind is bad. Isn't it a hard and cruel man who would hear a word from an old woman, and she holding him from the sea? It's the life of a young man to be gone on the sea. And who'd listen to an old woman with one thing, and she's saying it over? I must go now quickly. I'll ride down on the red mare, and the grey pony will run behind me. The blessing of God in you. Uh, he's gone now. God spares, and we'll not see him again. He's gone now, and when the black night is fallen, I'll have no son left me in the world. Why wouldn't you give him your blessing and he looking round in the door? Isn't it sorrow enough as on every one in this house, without your sending him out with an unlucky word behind him, and a hard word in his ear? Uh, You're taking away the top from the cake. The Son of God forgive us, Nora. We're after forgetting his bit of bread. And it's destroyed. He'll be gone till dark night, and he after eaten nothing since the sun went up. It's destroyed. He'll be surely. There's no sense left on any person in a house where an old woman will be talking forever. Mother, let you go down now to the spring well and give him this and he passing. You'll see him then, and the dark wood will be broken. And you can say, God speed you, the way he'll be easy in his mind. Will I be in it as soon as himself? If you go now, quickly. Uh, it's hard, says I am, to walk. Give her the stick, Nora, or maybe she'll slip on the big stones. What stick? The stick Michael brought from Connemara. In the big world, the old people do believe in things after them for their sons and children. But in this place, it's the young men do believe in things behind for them that do the old. Wait, Nora. Maybe she turned back quickly. She's that sorry, God help her. You wouldn't know the things she do. Is she gone round by the bush? She's gone now. Throw the bundle down quickly. For the Lord knows when she'll be out of it again. The young priest said he'd be passing tomorrow. And we might go down and speak to him below if it's Michael's they are, surely. Did he say what way they were found? There were two men, Sissy. And they're rowing round with Pochine before the cocks crowed. And the oar of one of them caught the body. And they're passing the black cliffs of the north. Give me a knife, Nora. The strings perished with the salt water. And there's a black knot in it you wouldn't loosen in a week. I've heard tell it was a long way to Donegal. It is, surely. There was a man in here a while ago. The man sold us that knife. And he said if you'd set off walking from the rocks beyond, it would be seven days you'd be in Donegal. And what time would a man take and he floating? The Lord spare us, Nora. Isn't it a queer, hard thing to say? If it's his, they are, surely. I'll get a shot off the hook the way we can put the one flannel on the other. It's not with them, Captain. And where would it be? I'm thinking Batley put it on him in the morning. For his own shot was heavy with the salt in it. There is a bit of a sleeve of the same stuff. Give me that and it will do. Here. It's the same stuff, Nora. But if it is itself, aren't there great rolls of it in the shops in Galway? And isn't it many another man may have a shot of it as well as Michael himself? It's Michael, Kathleen. Michael, God spare his soul. A 
what'll herself say when she hears this story in Bartley on the sea? It's a plain stocking. It's the second one of the third pair I knitted. And I put up three score stitches and I dropped four of them. It's that number it is. Oh, Nora. Isn't it a bitter thing to think of him floating that way to the far north? No one to keen him but the black hags that are be flying on the sea. And isn't it a pitiful thing when there's nothing left of a man who was a great roar and fisher but a bit of an old shirt and a plain stock? Tell me, is herself coming, Nora? I hear a little sound on the path. She is, Captain. She's coming up to the door. Put these things away before she'll come in. Maybe it's easier she'll be after giving her blessing to Bartley. And we won't let on we've her dance in the time he's on the sea. We'll put them here in the corner. Will she see it was crying I was? Keep your back to the door the way the light will not be on you. You didn't give him his bit of bread? Did you see him riding down? Oh, God forgive you. Isn't it a better thing to raise your voice and tell what you've seen than to be making lamentation for a thing that's done? Did you see Bartley, I'm saying to you? My heart's broken from this day. Did you see Bartley? I seen the fearfulest thing. God forgive you. He's riding the mare now over the green head and the grey pony behind him. The grey pony behind him? What is it, ailed you at all? I've seen the fearfulest thing any person has seen since the day Bride Dara seen the dead man with the child in his arms. Oh. Tell us what it is you've seen. I went down to the spring well and I stood there saying a prayer to myself. Then Bartley came along, and he riding on the red mare, with a grey pony behind him. Son of God, spare us, Nora. What is it you've seen? I seen Michael himself. You did not, Mother. It wasn't Michael you seen, for his body has after been found in the far north. And he's got a clean burial by the grace of God. I'm after seeing him this day and he riding and galloping. Bartley came first on the red mare. And I tried to say God's speech. But something choked the words in my throat. He went by quickly. And a blessing of God on you, says he. But I could say nothing. I looked up then, and I cried at the grey pony. And there was Michael upon it, with fine clothes on him, and new shoes at his feet. Oh, it's the stride we are from this day. It's the stride we are, surely. Didn't the young priest say the Almighty God won't leave a destitute with no son living? It's little the like of him knows of the sea. Bartley will be lost now. I'll let you call in Eamon and make me a good coffin out of the white boards, for I won't live after them. I've had a husband and a husband's father and six sons in this house, six fine men. Though it was a hard birth I had with every one of them, and they coming into the world. And some of them were found, and some of them were not found. But they're gone now, a lot of them. They were Stephen and Sean, were lost in the great wind and found after in the bay of Gregory of the Golden Mouth, and carried up the two of them on one plank, and in by that door. Did you hear that, Kathleen? Did you 
you hear a noise in the northeast? There's someone after crying out by the seashore. Sure was Seamus and his father, and his own father again, were lost in a dark night. And not a stick or sign was seen of them when the sun went up. There was Patch after, was drowned out of a curragh that turned over. I was sitting here with Bartley, and he a baby lying on my two knees. And I seen two women, and three women, and four women coming in, and they crossing themselves and keen in the while. I looked out then, and there were men coming after them, and they holding a thing in the half of a red sail, and water dripping out of it. It was a dry day, Nora, and leaving a track to the door. Is it Patch or Michael? Or what is it at all? Michael is after being found in the far north. And when he's found there, how could he be here in this place? There does be a power of young men floating round in the sea. And what way would they know if it was Michael they had? Or another man like him? For when a man is nine days in the sea and the wind blows, it's hard said his own mother would be to say what man was in it. It's Michael, it is. For they're after sending us a bit of his clothes from the far north. They're carrying a thing among them. And there's water dripping out of it and leaving a track by the big stones. Is it badly, it is? It is surely, God rest his soul. What way was he drowned? The grey pony knocked him over into the sea and he was washed out where there's a great surf on the white rocks. They're all gone now. And there isn't anything more the sea can do to me. I'll have no call now to be up crying and praying when the wind breaks from the south. And you can hear the surface in the east and the surface in the west making a great stir with the two noises and they hitting one on the other. I'll have no call now to be going down and getting holy water in the dark nights after sour. And I won't care what way the sea is when the other women will be keening. Give me the holy water, Nora. There's a small sub still on the dresser. I haven't prayed for you badly to the Almighty God. It isn't that I haven't said prayers in the dark night till you wouldn't know what I'd be saying. But it's a great rest I'll have now. And it's time, surely. It's a great rest I'll have now and great sleeping in the long nights after sowing. If it's only a bit of wet flour we'd to have to eat, and maybe a fish that would be stink. 
Maybe yourself and Eamon would make a coffin when the sun rises. We have fine white boards herself bought, God help her. Thinking Michael would be found. And I have a new cake you can eat while you'll be working. Are there nails with him? There are not, Cullum. We didn't think of the nails. It's a great wonder she wouldn't think of the nails and all the coffins she's seen made already. It's getting old she is and, and broken. She's quiet now and daisy. But the day Michael was drowned, you could hear her crying out from this to the spring well. It's fonder she was of Michael. And would anyone have thought of that? An old woman will soon be tired with anything she will do. And isn't it nine days herself is after crying and keening and making great sorrow in the house? They're all together this time. And the end is come. May the almighty God have mercy on Bartley's soul and on Michael's soul and on the souls of Seamus and Patch and Stephen and Sean. And may he have mercy on my soul, Nora, and on the soul of every one is left living in the world. has a clean burial in the far north by the grace of the Almighty God. Bartley will have a fine coffin out of the white boards and a deep grave surely. What more can be want than that? No man at all can be living forever and we must be satisfied. We are in a cottage kitchen in a remote glen. There are a couple of glasses on the table and a bottle of whiskey, as if for a wake. Nora Burke is moving about the room, settling a few things and lighting candles on the table, looking now and then uneasily at a bed with a body lying on it, covered with a sheet. Someone knocks softly at the door. She takes up a stocking with money from the table and puts it in her pocket. Then she opens the door. Good evening to you, lady of the house. Ah, good evening, kindly stranger. So wild night, God help you to be out in the rain falling. It is, surely, and I walk into British from the Akram Fair. Is it walking on your feet, stranger? On me two feet, lady of the house. And when I saw the light below, I thought maybe if you'd a sup a new milk in the quiet days in corner where a man could... S the Lord have mercy on us all. Uh, it doesn't matter anyway, stranger. Come in out of the rain. Is, is it departed he is? It is, stranger. He's after dying on me. God forgive him. And there I am now with a hundred sheep beyond in the hills and no turf drawn for the winter. It's a queer look is on him for a man that's dead. <laughs> he was always queer, stranger. And I suppose them that's queer and their living men will be queer bodies after. Isn't it a great wonder you're letting him lie there and you're not tidied or laid out itself? I was a feared stranger, for he put a black curse on me this morning if I touch his body the time he dies sudden. Or let anyone touch it, except his sister only. 
I'm sure it's ten miles away she lives in the big glen over the hill. It's a queer story. He wouldn't let his own wife touch him and he die in quiet in his bed. He was an old man and a not man stranger. And it's always upon the hills he was pink and thoughts in the dark mist. Look, lay your hand on him now and tell me if it's cold here, surely. Is it getting the curse on me, you'd be woman of the house. I wouldn't lay me hand on him for locking a hand again and it filled with gold. Maybe cold would be no sign of death or the like of him. For he was always cold every day since I knew him. And every night, stranger. But I'm thinking it's dead he is, surely. For he's complaining a while back of a pain in his heart. And this morning, the time he was gone off to Britis for three days or four, he was taken with a sharp turn. Then he went into his bed and he was saying it was destroyed he was the time the shadow was going up through the glen. And when the sun set on the bog beyond, he made a great lip and let a great cry out of him and stiffened himself out the like of a dead sheep. God rest his soul. Well, maybe that'll do you better than the milk of the sweetest cow in County Wicklow. The Almighty God reward you, and may it be to your good health. I've no pipe saving his own, stranger, but their sweet pipes to smoke. Thank you kindly, lady of the house. Sit down, no stranger, and be taking no rest. I've walked a great way through the world, lady of the house, and seen great wonders. But I never seen a wake till this day with fine spirits and good tobacco and the best of pipes. And no one to taste them but a woman only. Didn't you hear me saying it was only after dying on me he was when the sun went down? And how would I go into the glen and tell the neighbours? And I alone woman with no house near me. There's no offence, lady of the house. Oh, no offence in life, stranger. Uh, how would the like of you passing in the dark night? No the lonesome way I was, with no house near me at all. I knew rightly. And I was thinking, and I coming in through the door, that it's many a lone woman would be afeard of the like of me in the dark night, in a place wouldn't be as lonesome as this place. Well, there aren't two living souls that see the little light you have shining from the glass. I'm thinking many would be afeard. But I never know what way I'd be afeard of beggar bishop or any many you at all. Uh, it's other things than the like of you, stranger, would make a person afeard. It is surely God help us all. You're saying that, stranger, as if you were easy afeard. Is it myself, lady of the house, that does be walking round in the long nights and crossing the hills when the fog is on them? The time a little stick it seem as big as your arm, and a rabbit as big as a bay horse, and a stack of turf as big as a town church in the city of Dublin. If myself was easy afeard, I'm telling you, it's long ago I'd have been locked into the Richmond Asylum, or maybe have run up in the back hills with nothing on me but an old shot and been eaten by the crows the like a patch Darcy. The Lord have mercy in him in the year that's gone. Oh. You knew Darcy? Wasn't I the last one heard his living voice in the whole world? Uh, there were great stories of Arthur's heard at that time. But would anyone believe the things I do be saying in the glen? It was no lie, lady of the house. I was passing below on a dark night the like of this night. And the sheep were lying under the ditch. And every one of them coughing and choking like an old man with the great rain and the fog. Then I heard the thing talking. Queer talk. You wouldn't believe it at all and you out of your dreams. And merciful God, says I. If I begin hearing the like of that voice or the thick mist, I'm destroyed, surely. Then I run and I run till I was below on Ratvana. I got drunk that night, I got drunk in the morning, and I'm drunk the day after. I was coming from the races beyond. And the third day they found Darcy. Then I knew it was himself I was after hearing, and I wasn't afeard any more. God spare Darcy. He'd always look in here and he passing up with passing down. And it's very lonesome I was after him a long while. And then I got happy again. If it's ever happy we are, stranger. For I got used to being lonesome. Was there anyone on the last bit of the road, stranger, and you coming from Akram? There was a young man with a drift of mountain yours, and he running after them this way and that. Far down, stranger. A piece only. Oh, maybe if you're not easy afeard, you'd stay here a shot while alone with himself. I, I would, surely. A man that's dead can do no hurt. I, I'm going a little back to the west, stranger, for himself would go there one night and another and whistle at that place. And, and then the young man you're after seeing, a kind of farmer has come up from the sea to live in a cottage beyond, would walk round to see if there was anything we'd have to be done. 
And, and I'm wanting him, this night stranger, the way he can go down into the glen when the sun goes up and tell the people that himself is dead. It's meself will go for him, lady of the house, and let you not be destroying yourself with the great rain. Ah, you wouldn't find your way, stranger. For there's a small path only, and it's running up between two slugs where a nest and cap to be drowned. No, let you be making yourself easy and saying a prayer for his soul. And it's not long I'll be coming again. Maybe if you'd a piece of great thread and a sharp needle. Oh, there's great safety in a sharp needle, lady of the house. I'd be putting a little stitch here and there in me old coat. The time I'll be praying for a soul and it going up naked to the saints of God. Oh, there's the needle, stranger. And I'm thinking you won't be lonesome and you used to the back hills. <laughs> for isn't a dead man itself more company than to be sitting alone? And hearing the winds crying, and you not knowing on what things your mind each day. It's true, surely. And the Lord have mercy on us all. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O oh Lord. Lord, hear my voice. <coughs> the Lord saves. Don't be a fear, stranger. A man that's dead can do no hurt. I meant no harm, Your Honor. And won't you be leaving me easy now to be saying a little prayer for your soul? Ah, uh, that devil mender. Do you hear that, stranger? Did ever you hear another woman could whistle the like of that with two fingers in her mouth? Uh, and just stride with the truth. And let you bring me a drop quickly before herself will come back. Is it not dead you are? How would I be dead and I as dry as a backbone, stranger? What'll herself say if she smells the stuff on you? For I'm thinking it's not for nothing that you're letting on to be dead. It is not, stranger. But she won't be coming near me at all. And it's not long now I'll be letting on. For I've a cramp in me back, and me hips asleep on me, and there's been the devil's own fly itch in me nose. It's near dead I was wanting to sneeze, and you blathering out here about the rain, and Dassy, the devil choke him, and the toad and church. Give me that whiskey. Would you have herself come back before I taste a drop at all? Uh. Go over now to that cupboard and bring me a black stick you'll see in the west corner by the wall. Is it... is it that, Your Honor? It is, stranger. It's a long time I'm keeping that stick, for I've a bad wife in the house. Is it herself, master of the house? And she a grand woman to talk? It's herself, surely. It's a bad wife she is. A bad wife for an old man. And I'm getting old, God help me. Though I've an arm to me still. Let you wait now a short while, and it's a great sight you'll see in this room in two hours or three. Hey, is that somebody above? There's a voice speaking in the path. Put that stick here in the bed, and smooth the sheet away to his lying. Be fallen to sleep now, and don't let on you no anthem, or I'll be having your life. I wouldn't have told you at all, but it's destroyed with the truth I was. Have no fear, master of the house. What is it I know the like of you that I'd be saying a word or putting out my hand to stay you at all? Stranger, stranger. Wish, wish, be quiet, I'm telling you. They're coming now at the door. I wasn't long at all, stranger, for I met himself on the path. You were middling long, lady of the house. There was no sign from himself. No sign at all, lady of the house. Go over now and pull down the sheet and look on himself, my dear Dara. And you'll see it's the truth I'm telling you. I will not, Nora. I do be afeard of the dead. Uh, will you drink a supper tea with myself and the young man, stranger? Or, or will you go into the little room and stretch yourself a shot while in the bed? I'm thinking it's the stride you are walking the length of that way in the great rain. Is it go away and leave you and you have an awake lady of the house? I will not, surely. And it's none of your tea I'll be asking either. And that's a poor court you have, God help you. And I'm thinking it is a poor tailor you are with it. If it's a poor tailor I am, I'm thinking it's a poor hair does be running backward and forward after a little handful of yours, the way I seen yourself running this day, young fella, and you're coming from the fair. Let you not mind him at all, my Gildara. He has a drop taken, and it's soon he'd be falling asleep. It's no lie he's telling. I was destroyed, surely. They were that willful they were running off into one man's bit of oats and another man's bit of hay. And tumbling into the red bog till it's more like a pack of old goats than sheep they were. Mountain yaws is a queer breed, nor a buck, and I'm not used to them at all. Uh, there's no one can drive a mountain yaw but the men to be reared in Glen Malour, I've heard them say. And above by Rat Van and the Glenny Mall, men the like of Patch Darcy, God spare his soul. 
Odwar threw 500 sheep and missed one of them, and he not threatening them at all. Is it the man went queer in his head the year this gone? It is, surely. That was a great man, young fella. A great man, I'm telling you. There was never a lamb from his own yours he wouldn't know before it was mapped. And he'd run from this to the city of Dublin and never catch for his breath. He was a great man, surely, stranger. And isn't it a grand thing when you hear a living man saying a good word of a dead man and he may dying? It's the truth I'm saying, and God spare his soul. Uh, I, I'll take a stretch here in the chimney, Cardinal. For I, I played with his sleep. I heard tell this day in order, Buck. That it was on the path below, Patch Darcy would be passing up and passing down. And I heard them say he's never passed at night or morning without speaking with yourself. It was no lie you heard, Michael Dara. I'm thinking it is a power of men you're after knowing, if it is in a lonesome place you live itself. It's in a lonesome place you do have to be talking with someone and looking for someone in the evening of the day. And if it's a power of men I'm after knowing, they were fine men. For I was a hard child to please and a hard girl to please. And it's a hard woman I am to please this day, Michael Dara. And it's no lie, I'm telling you. Uh, was it a hard woman to please you were when you took himself for your man? Oh, what way would I leave an I an old woman if I didn't marry a man with a bit of a farm and cows in it and sheep on the back hills? And that's true, Nora. And maybe it's no fool you were. For there's good grazing on it if it is a lonesome place. And I'm thinking it's a good sum he has left behind. Uh, I do be thinking in the long nights. It was a big fool I was that time, Michael Latter. For what good is a bit of a farm with cows on it and sheep in the back hills? When you do be sitting, looking out from a door the like of that door, and seeing nothing but the mist rolling down the bog, and the mist again and they're rolling up the bog, and hearing nothing but the wind crying out in the bits of broken trees were left from the great star. And the streams roaring with the rain. What is it ails you this night, Nora Buck? I foretell it's the like of that talk you do hear from men, and they after being a great while in the back hills. Uh, it's a bad night, and a wild night, my Dara. And isn't it a great while I'm at the foot of the back hills, sitting up here, boiling food for himself, and food for the brood so, and baking a cake when the night falls. Uh, it's a long while I'm sitting here in the winter and the summer and the fine spring. With the young growing behind me and the old passing. Saying to myself one time to look on Mary Bryan, who oh, wasn't that height and I a fine girl grown up. And there she is now with two children and another coming on her in three months or four. That's three pounds we have known or a book. And saying to myself another time to look on Peggy Kavanagh who had the lightest hand at milking a cow that wouldn't be easy, or turn on a cake. And there she is now, walking round on the roads, or sitting in a dirty old house with no teeth in her mouth, and no sense. <gasps> and no more hair than you'd see in a bit of a hill in the afterburn on the force from it. That's five pounds and ten notes. A good sum, surely. It's not that way you'll be talking when you marry a young man or a buck. And they were saying in the fair, my lambs were the best lambs, and I got a grand price, and for I'm no fool now at making a bargain when my lambs are good. What was it you got? Twenty pounds for the lot, Nora Burke. We do right now to wait till himself will be quiet a while in the seven churches, and then you'll marry me in the chapel of Rathfana, and I'll bring the sheep up on a bit of a hill you have on the back mountain, and we won't have anything we'd be afeard to let our minds on when the mist is down. Why would I marry you, Mike Dara? You'll be getting old and I'll be getting old. And in a little while, I'm telling you, you'll be sitting up in your bed the way himself was sitting, with a shake in your face and your teeth falling, and the white hair sticking out all round you like an old bush where sheep do be lepping a gap. Oh, it's a pitiful thing to be getting old. But it's a queer thing, surely. It's a queer thing to see your own rotten old man sitting up there in his bed with no teeth in him and a rough word in his mouth. And his chin the way it would take the back from the edge of an old board you'd have built in a door. Oh, God, forgive me, Michael Dara. We'll all be getting old. But it's a queer thing, surely. It's too lonesome you are from living a long time with an old man, Nora. And you're talking again like a herd that would be coming down from the thick mist. But it's a fine life you'll have now with a young man. 
A fine life, surely. <coughs> uh, God deliver. Though you'll not marry her at the time I'm rotten below on the seven churches, and you'll see the thing I'll give you will fall you on the back mountains when the wind is high. Get me out of it, Nora, for the love of God. He always did what you bid him, and I'm thinking he'd do it now. Oh, is it dead he is or living? It's little you care if it's dead or living I am. But there'll be an end now of your fine times and all the talk you have of young men and old men and of the mis coming up or going down. You'll walk out now from that door, Nora Burke, and it's not tomorrow or the next day or any day of your life that you'll put your foot in through it again. It's a hard thing you're saying for an old man, master of the house. And what did the like of her do if you put her out on the roads? Let her walk around like a peggy cavern below. And be begging money at the crossroads or selling songs to the men. Walk out now, Nora Burke, and at soon you'll be getting old with that life I'm telling you. At soon your teeth'll be falling, and your head'll be the like of a bush where sheep to be left in a gap. There's a fine union below in Rathrum. The like of her would never go there. It's lonesome road she'll be going, and hiding herself away till the end will come. And they'll find her stretched like a dead sheep with a frost on her. Or the big spiders, maybe. And they put their webs on her in the butt of a ditch. Eh, what way will yourself be that day, Daniel Burke? What way will you be that day and you're lying down a long while in your grave? For it's bad you are living. And it's bad you'll be when you're dead. Yet if it is itself, Daniel Burke, who can help it at all? And let you be getting up into your bed now and not taking your death with the wind blowing on you and the rain with it and you have in your skin. It's proud and happy you'll be if I was getting me death the day I was sure of yourself. Let you walk out through that door, I'm telling you, and let you not be passing this way if it's hungry you are or wanting a bed. Uh, maybe himself a taker. Uh, what would he do with me now? Give you the half of a dry bed and good food in your mouth. Is it a fool you think him, stranger? Or is it a fool you were born yourself? Let her walk out of that door and let you go along with her, stranger, if it's rain in itself. For it's too much talk you have, surely. We'll be going now, lady of the house. The rain is falling, but the air is kind. And maybe it'll be a grand morning, be the grace of God. Eh, what good is a grand morning when I'm destroyed, surely? Am I going out to get my death walk on the road? You'll not be getting your death with myself, lady of the house. And I know in all the ways a man can put food in his mouth. We'll be going now, I'm telling you. And the time you'll be feeling the cold and the frost and the great rain and the sun again and the south wind blowing in the glens, you'll not be sitting up on a wet ditch the way you're after sitting in this place, making yourself old but looking on each day and it passing you by. You'll be saying one time, it's a grand evening, be the grace of God. And another time, it's a wild night, God help us, but it'll pass surely. You'll be saying... Go that... out of that door, I'm telling you, and do your blood and below on the glen. Come along with me now, lady of the house. And it's not my blather you'll be hearing only, but you'll be hearing the herons crying out over the black lakes, and you'll be hearing the grouse and the owls with them, and the larks, and the big thrushes when the days are warm. And it's not from the like of them... You'll be hearing a tale of getting old like Peggy Kavanagh and losing the hair off you and the light of your eyes. But it's fine songs you'll be hearing when the sun goes up and there'll be no old fella wheezing the like of a sick sheep close to your ear. I'm thinking it's myself will be wheezing that time with lying down under the heavens when the night is cold. But you've a fine piece of talk, stranger, and it's with yourself I'll go. And you, Daniel Burke, you think it's a grand thing you're after doing what you're letting on to be dead. But what is it at all? What way would a woman live in a lonesome place the like of this place and she not making a talk with the men passing? And what way will yourself live from this day with none to care you? What is it you'll have now but a black life, Daniel Burke? And it's not long, I'm telling you, till you'll be lying again under that sheet and you're dead, surely. <coughs> Hmm. Sit down now and take a little taste of the stuff, Michael Dara. There's a great truth on me, and the night is young. And it's very dry, I am, surely, with the fear of death you put on me, and I after driving mountain yours since the turn of the day. I was thinking to strike you, Michael Dara. But you're a quiet man, God help you, and I don't mind you at all. You're a good health, Michael Dara. 
God reward you, Daniel Burke. And may you have a long life and a quiet life and good health with it. <laughs>